hello everyone so um this video we are talking about um the Juin smooth 5 and uh i just got this gimbal on amazon and uh, it sells for about a hundred seventy dollars um shipped and uh, uh i know there is another gimbal came out very recently which is the Juin crane m3 i think that's a more heavy duty version of this gimbal but again this gimbal by itself is already pretty heavy duty as evident by the design of a professional looking gimbal compared to some of the lower end gimbal which you can collapse into a very small um i guess a pocketable size so this one is designed more for professional use and supposedly this one supports the weight of iphone 12 pro max which is the exact phone that i'm using right now um, the reason I got it is because I do a lot of um, videos just right in front of my desk, uh, like camera reviews, camera repairs, whatever. And uh, um, when I'm using my iPhone, this is my old setup, a super ghetto, um, cheap $2 cell phone mount that I'm trying to squeeze my gigantic iPhone 12 Pro Max on, and it never stays in place. Look at that. It's already like pretty badly uh, smashed because it's cheap. And uh, using that, it, the video just, you know, don't come out as good as I want. And sometimes um, lots of shakiness. So I got this gimbal and uh, apparently um, I have been using it like for a very brief amount of time. And I'm already pretty much in love with the gimbal because there are some really, really cool features of this gimbal that I did not find are very hard to use when i reviewed the crane m.2 um two years ago so really glad that it improved upon a lot of features on the crane m2 and make make it as user friendly as possible so i'm just going to go over um the externals of the gimbal by itself i'm not going to go through the unboxing because really there isn't anything else in the box besides the gimbal and a usb charging cable and a manual okay so um take a look at the exterior features so it looks professional it looks nice and uh this uh, during smooth five with the chinese letter during uh, stamped on there on the motor um and this thing when it cam is fully locked so it doesn't move around easier to pack so to unlock everything okay first step is you turn this to the horizontal position on on the top head and as you can see those areas are locked so there is a small tab here that you have to push towards the opening you unlock the tab here and exact same thing here you push the other way now the tab is fully unlocked so the next step is actually placing the phone onto the tab right here you do it like this and you actually let's see this is the front part of of the uh, of the thing, of course. So another tab to unlock the panning. Now I can kind of show you guys what it looks like when it's fully set up. So when it's fully set up, it's gonna look like this with the motor towards you, and the camera in the front. Okay. So there is a USB hook over there for accessories and other kind of stuff. Probably you know I, I don't really know what they're for, but I don't really need them. Um, this is a cell phone mount. It's actually, it looks metal, but it's actually uh, pretty plasticky, okay? But the, the clamping mechanism, try to show you guys, is pretty heavy duty compared to the um, my super ghetto setup right here, <laughs> right? Um, this is definitely, definitely a lot better in terms of holding my iPhone safe um, during recording. And you can see there are two ports over here those are for the accessory magnetic uh, mounts for led lights so um, the problem with those led lights is they are pretty expensive they are like extra 50 bucks um, on top of the 170 dollars you're gonna pay um, as a package so if you buy that package i think it also comes with a carrying case which i guess would be nice so if you absolutely need the led light or you know the carrying case you should get it but Again, for my most of my, my other needs, I'm using my A7 IV for the video recording for you know much better quality and mounted on a tripod. But this is run 
run and gun and this is excellent excellent for desktop use okay so besides desktop use i can mount this again on a stand and have full control of the pan and tilt um, also it's going to be much more stable because it's uh, by default stabilized um, some other cool features is in the Jiring, the ZY Cami app, um, there are some other really interesting features like the time lapse, the hyper lapse, full manual control, um, and automatic video creation. Um, I think there's also a paid version which includes a, a few more features for the Cami app. But again, by default, the Cami app is already a lot more powerful than iPhone's integrated camera app, which is pretty dumb and fully automatic. So with the Cami app, you're able to actually do a lot more manual control. Another cool feature in the Kami app is the automatic gesture recording. So I, I did a sample footage. I'm going to post that sample footage um, over here. So this footage is recorded using the ZY Kami app with the automatic gesture recording. So all I did before the recording started is I did this. Or alternatively, you can also do this, waving at the camera, and it would start a countdown timer for about three, four seconds, and then it would start recording, and at the same time, actually follow your face. So this is a pretty cool feature that, of course, if you're using the iPhone camera app, you're never going to be able to do, which is following the face. However, there are some implementation limitations because, um, as you can see, um, even though it's following my face, it's not placing my face at the optimal position, somewhere at two thirds of the camera's uh, frame. Uh, usually that's a nice area to place where the, the person's head is, especially if they're shooting horizontally. Or sometimes it's even better to just cut your face off and cut your head off and then um, shoot with your face very close to the top of the frame. But there is no option in the ZY Cami app to control where it's going to track or place the tracked subject. So I hope this could be, um, I guess, um, implemented in the next update um, to the Cami app. Um, that would be fantastic because the tracking feature is nice, but again, it's placing the subject at a horrible position. It's too centered. It's supposed to be off center and slightly to the top, especially if the subject is a, a human subject. Okay, so um, this is what it looks like, and uh, uh, this is with the Cami app's automatic uh, exposure function. So I didn't use the manual because there is actually another limitation in terms of what ISO uh, can you pull out of the iPhone when you start uh, using it. So with the automatic mode, your ISO can go as low as probably like. 10, 20, ISO 20, but if I switch to the manual mode on the Cami app, the lowest ISO I can use is ISO 100, which actually made this shot quite more expo uh, overexposed. So that is the reason I didn't use the manual mode, but I guess when the lighting situation is actually darker than this, you would be able to use the manual mode and set your ISO at a optimal or lowest um, possible and then set your shutter speed at 60 frames per second that way you can have a very nice smooth looking motion uh, when you try to post process your footage from the iPhone because right now the uh, shutter speed is anywhere between a couple hundreds of a second to thousands of a second depending on the lighting situation in the back um, but you do have the manual option, but it's very limited. This footage is shot on the iPhone camera app, and I want to compare the difference between the iPhone camera app, which is pretty much fully automatic, um, with the uh, ZY Cami app. So again, this is recorded on the iPhone camera app. And as you guys can see uh, from that sample footage, um, it's pretty cool to automatically start recording with just this or that, and the camera would track your face and start recording. Uh, now that face tracking feature, I want to comment, is, is not perfect. It might be good for tracking your cats maybe, but not for humans because it places the human right at the center of the subject, of the, of the frame, which is definitely not ideal for video recording. And uh, um, so alternatively, you can enable um, gesture mode, but disable the tracking function. So that way you can place yourself, you know, somewhere ideally on the frame line and then start the recording. But the downside is um, it won't be able to track your face if you're moving around. 
Um, so give or take, there are limitations, but there are some really nice, thoughtful implementations as well. I also tried the time lapse mode, which personally is my favorite mode, especially you know using a gimbal because with the time lapse you can set a path going from left and right, up and down, and or just a a, a variety of path. Which the gimbal is gonna start recording. You set your you know recording time, and then it's gonna move across the path um, just by the command that you set it to. So very very cool feature much much more cooler than a simple time lapse with a fixed frame okay so in that this gimbal is definitely going to give you you know great bang for the buck if you do a lot of time lapse and with that added motion panning motion uh, all right and over here is the the only thing that you need to balance on this gimbal okay that's like super easy so you put your phone on here depending on how heavy your phone is um, you're gonna go like probably all the way from here all the way to the end so the heavier your phone is the more towards the end you're gonna be so my iPhone is somewhere like close to the end but not at the end so and my iPhone doesn't have any accessories on it so if you do have a lot of accessories it's gonna probably go towards the end of the of the phone um, balance right here but for me it's not towards the end so I know there is more potential to balance more heavier stuff um, on this gimbal and once you click it into place as you can see I just use that tab to click it into place and this thing same thing like if I just move it over here clicking clicks into place and then I can get it a little bit smaller turning it so now it's ready to pack so um, some cool stuff compared to the Crane M2. The Crane M2 had an LCD screen, not as useful as a fully functioned um, buttons right here. So this is definitely an improvement and cost saving, but definitely a, a huge improvement. Okay, so you have your power button uh, on the right side, function button. Um, and uh, over here is a rotating dial, like the Canon you know, SDSR cameras. And in the center is a click button for the light. I hope this is customizable so you can use it for different functions, but they default this to the to the light for run and gun vlogging. Um, over here, are some quick shortcuts. And again, it would be nice if those are customizable, but they are not in the app or as of yet, they are still not customizable. Uh, there is a mode button right here. So all those buttons, um, except the mode button and the recording, the other buttons um, you have to pair with your Kami, the ZY Kami app to fully use. And of course the joystick to control the movements of the gimbal. Uh, over here, very gigantic and very obvious is a cool focus and zoom button. So with a uh, another click in the center, I think this is a recording button. I haven't used this yet, but the zoom feature in the Kami app is actually pretty cool. So when you pair with the app, um, you can do some really smooth, nice focusing using the three lens in the front of the camera, and it will automatically switch between those lens and give you a fairly good zooming effect. And it's also got um, that cool, like, uh, I don't know how do you call it, uh, that cool zoom that you go closer while the subject, uh, you know, the background shifts. Um, I don't really know what it's called, but that's a cool feature to have, but I tried it. Uh, the implementation is not as good, but they do have that function there. But just for regular recording, this, this zoom button is actually quite useful, quite useful. Okay. And it's nice and big and it's got a very good uh, resistance on here. So um, you can zoom very smoothly. Um, you can control the speed of the zoom. You can control the speed of the follow and the pan or like the, the gimbal tilt. Um, so that controls how fast the, the gimbal moves when you try to move them in the app. Again, everything's very simple and easy to use. There really isn't any more advanced setup, say, compared to a DJI Ronin S. When you open up the app, you don't have no idea uh, what those functions are. Everything is laid out. Everything is nice and clear, and they have the help function in the app for you to use. Um, so again, very well executed. So uh, here is a accessory mount. Um, I kind of wish it's a little bit lower so I can use my own uh, LED, you know, fill lights uh, because right here, if I mount my fill light, it's gonna, you know, get in the way of like using the gimbal's balancing and stuff. Okay, so not ideal. 
I wish there would be more space like somewhere down there to mount the light. Otherwise, I have to use another accessory to get the light slightly outwards to use my own fill lights. So in that regards, this accessory mount, I don't know how useful it is. OK, you might be able to mount a mic over here. So talking about mic uh, limitations of this gimbal. OK, so uh, you have a USB port here. I don't know what they're for, but you really cannot charge your phone while you're using the gimbal because you have to put your phone um, over here with the accessory port here so not to block the camera so if you put your phone here there's no way to charge your phone and also um, the way to balance if you want to like put something um, let's see if i can just quickly unscrew everything really quick So like if it's like this, it's very, very hard to put accessory on here. So basically, if you're using your phone, you can't charge it. And you, if you want to use external mics, uh, it's going to be tricky, too, because you're going to have to have something poked right here. Uh, I don't know, like I have um, I have my Rode wireless mic. Obviously, I can't use this because I first I need an accessory to mount this onto the iPhone, and second, there is no place for me to safely put it here without extending my iPhone all the way to the other side and then try to rebalance it with a whole bunch of accessories. So I kind of wished the implementation of the accessory port would be a little bit better on the Smooth Five, um, but again that that is just again the limitation of of the design and the compactness um, that you're going to sacrifice some of the features And it's a really cold day today in Miami. Um, yesterday night's temperature was 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, considered winter in Miami time. Um, but this is what the gimbal looks like uh, with the front facing camera uh, recording. So you can see kind of like what kind of effect you're gonna get if you're you know, doing vlogging work uh, with the front facing gimbal. And uh, let's just walk around the uh, yard a little bit. So, not bad. And of course, the exposure is fully automatic. So, um, yeah, uh, pretty useful if you like doing vlogging kind of work. And it's also got a feature to track your face. But again, as I said, uh, face tracking puts your, your face like somewhere at the very center of the frame, actually lowers the frame a little more. So it's, it's more gonna be like that. Again, not useful, but it does have that feature, okay? All right, guys, so this will be the conclusion section of the um, Juying Smooth 5 uh, overall impression for the first couple of days. And uh, I would have to say I'm actually quite impressed by the performance or actually the improvements uh, compared to the last Juying, which is the Crane M2 that I've used. Uh, right now, the, the software is a lot more smooth, a lot more user-friendly to use uh, in terms of customization. And uh, also, the auto face tracking feature is very well implemented. I only wish that there is option to actually place the automatic tracking somewhere in the frame instead of just putting it back into the centered position. The time-lapse function works extremely well. Especially um, cool if you uh, it's that you can implement a uh, kind of a track for the time lapse, uh, so it goes like a dolly effect, which moves uh, when the time time lapse function is being executed, which is really really cool. And uh, um, I try to, as you can see um, in the video samples, I try to hold the gimbal in the round mode and go really fast, and it's actually handled the movement 
of my running motion exceptionally well. Like uh, um, you'll probably see a lot of video compression um, in the video, but that's a limitation of the phone. So if that limitation could be eliminated, this is a very capable gimbal to use. So, um, and again, it, it held up the weight of my iPhone perfectly fine during the recording. So I really don't have a lot of complaints for the Smooth 5 uh, besides, you know, the software implement implementation hopefully could be improved uh, in the future generations of the ZY Cami app. And uh, other than that, this is a great gimbal for anybody who wants to, you know, get more serious on using your phone as a professional uh, video making tool or a, a vlogger tool. This is a very capable uh, gimbal to use, okay? And if you guys have any questions about this gimbal, you know, um, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. As I use the gimbal more and more for myself, I should be able to answer any questions or concerns you have uh, about this gimbal. So thanks again for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Take care.